He's coming on the clouds Kings and kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Oh, our God is the Lamb, the Lamb who was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb And every knee will bow before Him Stop, Lord Almighty. Who can stop, Lord Almighty? Who can stop, Lord Almighty? Who can stop, Lord? Oh, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him oh, Our God is the Lamb The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb And every knee will bow before Him oh, Our God is the Lion Roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him oh, Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb And every knee will bow before Him Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. We are glad you are here, whether it's in person or if it's online. Welcome to Imperial Community Church. It's middle of summer here, quite warm, and now getting quite humid. But it does not dampen our worship and our spirit. We're here today to worship God, to praise His name. And we offer that as well to you. We've prayed for this service. We've asked that God would show himself true through the songs, through the, the testimonies, through the preaching. So today, before we begin, 
I would just like to invite you to, to draw close to God, to get quiet. When you open up his word, read it with us. Don't just put the time in, but allow it to just come into you. For our membership, we've been praying for you. For our friends that communicate with us, we also, we're praying for you. We want God to protect you at this time. We want God to not only protect you, but cause you to grow and flourish. This is our time. As believers, it's our time to be the testimony to those around us. So now, with that in mind, I invite you to pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just now draw close to you, to your throne of grace, that we may find mercy and grace to help in time of need. Lord God, we just want to start by praising your name. Oh, Lord, how worthy you are to receive our praise. You who have taken the stars and, and placed them in the sky and know them by name. And Father, you know us also by name. You intimately know us. So that, Lord, we come to you now. We lower down our defenses and we ask, Father, speak to us, teach us, reach us, change us. Make us something better than what we are because of the Spirit living in us. Father God, we pray for the needs of our nation. We pray for the cities that are in unrest. We ask, Father, for godly leadership to to rise up for people to, to see what's happening and speak up. This isn't who we are. We're better than this. But protect them, Lord. Protect them from the evil one and pr protect them from the society that wishes to do us harm. But it is our time to shine. It's our time to to let others around us know, even in such circumstances with the coronavirus, we're not afraid. We're confident in Christ. He knows our future. And we know, ultimately, where we'll be. So, Lord, we want to pray. We ask that our nation, our states, and our cities all have our support in the best possible way and as a church, we gather together in the best possible way. We worship you in spirit and in truth, whether it's in person, collectively, or whether it's online. This is your time with us, Lord. So we thank you for this. We praise you for another week, and we ask it that you would bless this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique and song that is sings who all exclaiming indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable. Our shock, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim that you are amazing, God. Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? I've seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Imagine the sun gives source to its light. 
Yet conceals us to bring us a coolness of night None can fathom indescribable Uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All-powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing, God. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Incomparable, unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. One more time, indescribable. Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing, God Incomparable, unchangeable You see the depths of my heart And you love me the same You are amazing Depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing. Good morning. We're glad to see you here with us at Imperial Community Church. If you'll open your Bibles to Revelation 5, we'll look at the book with seven seals. So, Revelation 5, beginning with verse 1. I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. And I saw between the throne, with the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb standing, as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them, I heard saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wrestled with the question, why is Jesus the way to get to heaven? 
I mean, after all, with all the world religions, why is Christianity the only one that got it right? You have to understand that Christianity is not the only faith that claims exclusivity. In fact, other than the Baha'i faith, which says there are many windows in which to get to heaven, every other religion does claim the same, an exclusive way to get to God. They all make claims that their way is to achieve salvation, paradise, eternal life, jhana, immortality, swarga loka, nirvana, or the happy hunting ground. They all do. So they all have one thing in common. They all claim to have that answer to the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So today's sermon, we will explain why it is there's only one price paid that was sufficient for your debt of sin. Sin that which separates you from a righteous and holy God. And the fifth chapter of Revelation is one of the keys to understanding this. Redemption, propitiation, and salvation. And if any of these terms are foreign to you, then I believe you're in the right place at the right time. So this next portion of what we're going to talk about may be exactly what you need. I want to begin with some basics, though. First of all, we're transitioning chapter 4, chapter 5, which I said is a complete unit. And what you have is, is a continuation of John's vision that started in 4.1. And it's at the, the start of the explanation of things that must take place soon. And we're going to be in this vision that John's experiencing to the end of Revelation, through the rest of the book. The scene is in heaven, God's throne room, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the four living creatures, elders, the abundance of beautiful gemstones, radiant, brilliant rainbows, and impressive flashes of lightning are all there. And we see God seated on his throne, and the rest are all in attendance. Chapter 4, the throne, is what was front and center. Chapter 5, we're going to find out the Lamb is front and center. That's our main subject. John, the apostle, supernaturally raised up in the Spirit, is the one human participant of this glorious scene. And this is his testimony as he's written to us. Let's read verse 1 of Revelation, chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. The word book is really better translated scroll. The Greek word is biblion to which the word Bible originates from. This scroll rolled up and sealed with seven seals. And, and let's note that it's in God's right hand, secure with all authority. But what else is in God's right hand? Well, first of all, the nation Israel is. God's hand select nation to which the seed of David had come through. The Jews, they're his chosen people. Turning to Isaiah 41.10, just before they went into captivity, God promises Israel and he says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God holds Israel, his special chosen nation, in his righteous right hand. And then also individuals, those who are redeemed, also held in God's right hand. Psalm 139, you may recall, is one of the most poetic and beautiful expressions of God in his relationship to us, his people. Each individual, he knows us intimately. His omniscience, his omnipresence is, is on display through this psalm. Looking at verse 10, it talks about God's care and protection for each one of us. Because no matter where we go, it says, well, even there, your hand will lead me. Your right hand will lay hold of me. Because God's our anchor. Another testimony in Psalm 63, 8 says, My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. And now these are only a few references. There's, there's actually over a hundred of them in the Bible. And now the scroll, it's in God's hand. It's sealed up, perfectly sealed is the word. With seven seals locking down each progressive portion. And they'll be released sequentially in order to be experienced one at a time. Richard Lenski notes that when each seal is loosed or opened, it releases the revealing symbolism of what the book contains because the vision is actually seen, not read. In verse 2, the question comes out and says, Who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? Who is worthy? Who has the qualifications to approach God's throne? Who has the authority to take ownership of the scroll? And who has the ability to break the seals and reveal the contents inside? What does John see? Verse 3. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. There was no one in heaven. There is no one on earth. And even no one under the earth because no one is worthy that's what it says in verse 4 no one is worthy and we understand this because Romans 3.23 says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God so what's John's response he says I begin to weep greatly this is to cry freely and profusely through grief and pain. I don't know if you've ever experienced that kind of weeping, that kind of pain and grief. I can tell you one time in my life when I did, it's when my, my, my sister called me early morning. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even interpret the voice, who it was. It was crying so hard. And she says, mom's dead, mom's dead. She died in a car accident last night. So I figured it was maybe one of my sister-in-laws. And I said, well, who is this? And she said, it's Jenny, your sister. And she's just crying. And she goes, and I don't know Dwight's phone number, my brother. I said, I'll call him. So I call him at work. And I think I've got it under control right now. It's pretty horrible news. They went and got him off the shop floor and as soon as his voice hit the phone and said, hello, I lost it the same way. I broke down and I just bawled. It still affects me. And that was 1988. And that's what to weep greatly is. To have no control over yourself. No strength. 
just grief and pain. Verse 5 says, One of the elders said to, to John, said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. The elder says there's one, there's one who's qualified. And let me tell you about him. The lion of the tribe of Judah. And that harkens all the way back in your Bible to Genesis chapter 49, verses 9 and 10. Jacob, in giving a blessing to all of his sons, made this pronouncement in the blessing of Judah's lineage. He says in verse 9, Judah, my son, is a lion, a young lion that has finished eating its prey. Like a lion, he crouches and he lies down like a lioness. Who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honor. And that wasn't King Saul, the king, because King Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. David was from the tribe of Judah. And not only is he the lion from the tribe of Judah, he is the root of David. Very specifically, Isaiah 11, 11, 1 says, Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. This is the one who overcomes. He will be able to open the book and the seals. But what's this person's qualifications? What was needed to be overcome in the first place? And what did it take to overcome? The answer to these three questions is in verse 6. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Notice it's not the lion, it's the lamb. The Lamb. The Lamb is mentioned 28 times in the book of Revelation. And the word in the Greek is arnion. Arnion. Got that rule in there. And Strong's definition says it's a lamb that's qualified to be ceremonially clean. Arnion. Elsewhere in the New Testament, that word is not found. Lamb is... And the word is amnos. But guess what? There are only four variations or four times in the New Testament that the word lamb is used outside of Revelation. It seems so natural, doesn't it? I mean, it, 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 you would think it's in almost every book in the New Testament, but it's only four places. But in Revelation, the lamb ceremonially clean is mentioned 28 times. So let's talk about this. Jesus described as the lamb because of being our sacrifice for sin. And I say the lamb, not a lamb. It's not just selected from a group. It's the lamb. And that's his first appearance on this, in this planet when he came as a baby. The sacrifice for our sin because here you see him, he's standing as if slain. That doesn't really paint the right picture, does it? To try and understand that. But what we have is we have this lamb, the lamb, in its absolute perfection. Because it says he's perfect in power with seven horns. He's perfect in wisdom with seven eyes. And he's, his perfect presence the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. That's the lamb. The lion from the tribe of Judah also. 
He's brought into human existence through the lineage of Judah. And still, what's really interesting is he's brought into existence through this lineage, but he's the creator God. He's the one who, who created the people in which you have this lineage. David's line exists because he created it. So you can say David's Lord is also David's son. And that's a truth that you'll find that the Pharisees could not handle. They would not or they could not answer to that in Matthew 22. And this lion that we hear will be coming a second time. And he will roar into power. He will conquer Satan. He will conquer this world to establish his millennial kingdom. And at this time in verse 7, the lamb comes and he takes out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. And the lamb is the only one. There was no other. And this act, of, this act begets the act of worship. Because in verse 8, we see that everybody in attendance bow down to the Lord. The elders have harps and golden bowls of incense. These incense are filled with the prayers of the saints. The one thing I got out of this is that prayer and praise, prayer and praise are united in worship. They come together. The Greek word for prayer is petition, to intercede for the behalf of others. And these prayers are of the saints. These prayers may be from the believer of the tribulation age, or they may be earlier. They may be our prayers. Because the definition for saints is the people who belong to God, who serve him. So if, if you ever wonder whether you're a saint or not, just remember the definition is people who belong to God and who serve him. That's who the saints are. So live up to it. <laughs> don't, don't say yeah, you're just another, just a humble servant. You are a saint. Stand up. And in verse 9, they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. This reminds me of another passage to which we're tied to in the book of Daniel. In Daniel 7, you have this almost the same thing. You see the Ancient of Days on his throne, and then you see the Son of Man coming forth. And this is the response in verses 13 and 14 of Daniel 7. I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming. And he came up to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. That all the peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. He took the book, and he's able to break the seals. You, Jesus, you answer verse 2. You fulfill that because you're the Lamb of God. You are worthy. You have the right to receive because of who you are and what you've done for mankind. Look at this verse. It says, with your blood, with your blood, his death on the cross, with your blood. The key word in this theologically is the propitiation. The propitiation of the blood of Christ. That which paid the ransom price and satisfied the debt for sin with your blood. 
It wasn't just a little bit of blood, it was all of it. It was a death. And that satisfied the sin. And it says also, purchase for God. Purchase for God. The word picture for this is there's a slave market and we're, in, we're, we're tied up and bound in the slave market. And one comes through and with one act, he goes, I will purchase all of these. And he does. He purchases them or us. We are bought out of the slave market to become his own bond slave. Yet, not only are we no longer a slave, but in verse 10 it says, you've made them to be a kingdom and priests for our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Who's the they? From every tribe and tongue and people and nation. That is, people of common ancestry, common language, common nationality, and common race. And we'll see this phrase four times, four more times in the book of Revelation. Sometimes people wrestle with the fact also, why is Jesus the only one? But they also wonder and wrestle with the question about, what about those who have never heard the name of Jesus? I can tell you right now what scripture says. It says people from every tribe, every people will be in heaven. God masterfully knows. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. One of the passages that I really enjoyed thinking about this week was in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Turn there, please. Talking about Jesus, it says, In these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. That's Jesus. That's the God that we serve. That's the God who purchased our salvation through his blood on the cross. And it brings out the undeniable truth in the whole universe that there exists no one but Christ who can take that scroll out of the right hand of God in order to open it. There is no one else. You may have tried other things. In fact, because humans are humans, and we all fail at times. You may have had a bad experience in church, but we're not talking about church. We're talking about Christianity. We're talking about an individual faith, which each one of us has to have in order to see God. It doesn't matter what church you're belonging to. It just matters the God who you're relating to. Earlier I asked, What's this person's qualification? To be worthy, that is. Well, perfection in every way. That's all. What was needed to be overcome? And that was sin. The debt of sin. That is what separates us with an unreachable gulf. Sin. And what did it take to overcome this problem? It took that perfect person to shed his blood on the cross to pay for your debt, my debt of sin in order to open the door of heaven for us, open a, a path of forgiveness, a freedom from guilt, Anxiety, fear. That's what God gives us. He gives us perfect peace knowing who we are, that we also are in his right hand. 
Are you wrestling with that? Don't. It's time to start doubting your doubts and believe what you believe. Because the dog you feed is going to win the fight. Feed the right dog. Feed on the word of God. Feed on the faith that you can find in scripture. There will be naysayers, those who make fun of you, question you. Oh, you can't be sane if you believe in God. Actually, you can. In fact, you'll never be more sane. You'll never be more in your right mind when you start trusting in God. We come to God. We ask for forgiveness, first of all. We ask for forgiveness for our sin and that we accept God's provision, and that's Christ. That's what it takes to become a believer. It seems so easy, and it is. But sometimes it seems so hard because everything the world and everything Satan wants to throw at you wants to give you doubts. But I can tell you now, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And he doesn't say he will make your path smooth or that the, the, the trip isn't difficult, but he says he'll be with you every step of the way. Today may be that day to make a commitment or a recommitment in your faith. We're looking in Revelation 5. There's only one person worthy, and that's Jesus. The same Jesus who purchased you out of the slave market. We're going to stop here today. We won't make it through the rest of the book. We can pick it up next time. Let's pray, though. Father God, we are so grateful for your revelation of truth that we find in Scripture. That if meets us where we are and takes us where we need to be, it takes us and puts our feet firmly on the ground, yet spiritually we see you in heaven, on the throne, in control. Lord, we may be weeping like John, uncontrollable because of the events that have spiraled this world out of control. And we might be weeping because of our own events, our own personal trials and tribulations that have seemingly put us in a dark spot. And that's where we are when we come to the end of ourselves. In the beginning of you. Father God, accept our prayers, our petitions, our requests for forgiveness, and place us on the higher ground. Give us that joy, give us the love, give us the peace that passes all understanding. And for anyone, anybody, whether they're here personally or, or sitting in their front room watching this, if anyone, Lord, is speaking to you because of this, may they also reach out to us here at Imperial Community. Let us know what this means to them so that we can continue to pray and lift one another up. Father God, you're so good. You are so worthy. The only one worthy. And we praise you for that. It's in your holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you.
Please rise for our final song for the day. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all to Him I free. everybody for worshiping today let's close in prayer heavenly father we just thank you for this glimpse this insight this um, revelation of jesus who we worship and a chance to see who he really is father let us uh, honor him and, and and know more who he is and, and um, to the lamb that died for us thank you for your time to worship today we pray for those who who are struggling um, our friends and members and relatives and all the ones we come in talk, contact. Help us to represent you and to speak for you in all we do. We thank you again for this time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen.